Hey guys, welcome to VP, The Bible Perspective. The Bible, which we hold so dear, is a book of faith, not science. Now before you blow a gasket, let me explain. But before I do, please like and share this video. And please subscribe to VP, The Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or a comment, add it in the comment section. All comments are welcome. Now as I stated, the Bible, this book which we hold so dear, which we believe is the inspired word of God, the revelation given to us, a message, a revelation of who God is, what his purpose and plan for us, mankind is. Understand, it's a book of faith. It is not a book of science. It is, was never meant to be a book of science. Now, why do I say that? Because in the midst of the arguments now, usually under the title of creationalism versus evolution. You can also say science versus religion. Uh, this argument is raging, and basically scientists are winning the argument. Now, I don't know if they will fully win, uh, from a sin standpoint they will, in this current age. But we need to understand why I just made the statement that this is a book of faith. Back in the 18th century, um, the rise of humanism in this nation uh, planted the seeds of what today is now this scientific move. In fact, not only, uh, you can trace it back to humanism, but remember, out of that age came the, uh, the theory of evolution, but also uh, Christian science, Mormonism, uh, uh, Jehovah Witnesses. And they weren't just rebelling against, uh, um, uh, I think, just the cultural norms, but the established, <coughs> excuse me, the established religious system of that time. Now, evolution, of course, but even further catapult men in a humanistic way, because it was a way of getting away from God. Now, that's my opinion. It was a way of just saying, hey, this, let's, this, the whole God uh, influence on man. Because if you remove God from uh, the consciousness of man, then what do you have? Who, who do you have? How, and of course, we can even ask more deeper questions is how do you establish right and wrong? Now, atheists today attempt to do that. But here's my point about the Bible. I'm getting back to that. The Bible, is a, it was meant to only give us faith. It was, it was meant to reveal God's purpose reveal his revelation, his message, what he wanted us to know. Here's my point. You can't prove the, the claims of the Bible scientifically. It wasn't meant to be that way. It wasn't meant to say, hey, I can show you proof in the Bible that God created the heavens and the earth. You know, the first chapter of Genesis declare that God created the heavens and the earth. Can you prove that? No, you can't. You can't prove anybody uh, 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 created it. The only person who really can prove that is God himself. And by the way, he is going to prove it one day. It's called the second coming of Jesus Christ. But until then, we're spinning our wheels in arguments that we're not going to win because under the guidelines of science, evolution is a viable, valid theory. But let me also say this. It is just that. A theory. And, and as long as you can keep it in this scientific realm where you're constantly trying to prove through hypotheses and all the kind of scientific methods, then yes, uh, it is under the subject of science. But of course, when you look at the truth of it, and I always challenge people, listen to what people say. There is what's called scientific Fact. Gravity is a fact. There are certain laws of physics. Fact. And as believers, we don't uh, disclaim scientific fact. In fact, we would argue God created the physics, the law of the physics. Now, what do I mean? Go back to the evolution theory. And to me, it's just that, and it takes a lot of faith to believe that all what we see comes from nothing. In other words, you have to start with something. 
Now, in this case, you start with the elements that caused an explosion. And then what they want to tell us is that from this explosion came this order. From this explosion, all of a sudden now, and here's what, what you can always look at their, their reasoning. Because they don't get into details, by the way. In other words, let's just say, well, just give enough time and then all this can happen, right? Uh, if you give enough time, you're going to have order. If you give, so let's, well, 14 billion years is the, the, the age, they say, is the year of the, of the, of the universe. Okay, and so what they're basically saying is that within 14 billion years time, this is how we can have what we have. But what started it? So you start with an explosion. This is what they say. If you keep going, you're going to start with an explosion. Okay, so then from the explosion, the earth, everything cooled down. Well, what cooled down? How did life cool down from intense heat? Now, I'm not a scientist, and here, let me just do this right here to acknowledge. I am not a scientist. I am not trying to stand on the platform of scientists. Uh, I would not even dare to do that. But I'm a reasonable person that you can't tell me that it's, you can't pee on me and tell me it's raining. Uh, so from that perspective, I got some reasoning faculties there. So let's kind of go back and I'm going to say, let me ask the questions then. If you have an explosion and and everything we see from explosions, but then, of course, becomes intense heat, fires, right? Gas explosion, chemical explosion, bomb explosions, right? Well, when this intense heat happens, hmm, what is the result of that? Because basically what they're saying is universes came out of that explosions. Okay, give it 14 billion years, but universes came out of that. Not only universes, but orbiting universes. In other words, each galaxies, I'm sorry, galaxies came out of these, the, the, this explosion within the universe, right? So galaxies came out of that. And these ga each galaxies, which they tell us there are billions of galaxies that are orbiting around this vast uh, space. So that means from the very tiny explosion, right? So how big was this explosion? Was this explosion a galaxy size explosion? What caused the explosion? And all of a sudden, in this explosion, the expanse of the universe. So it, 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 it stretched out the universe and then all of a sudden, it spawned billions of galaxies. And in each galaxy, there are literally, according to what they tell us, millions of stars in the galaxies or even, let's just say, hundreds of thousands of stars, right? Within the galaxies, right? In our own Milky Way galaxies, right? How many stars are in the Milky Way galaxy? And the Milky Way galaxy itself is traveling through the universe amongst all kinds of other galaxies. Now, of course, it's hard for us to know what is going on in some of the other galaxies that are billions of miles away. But in our own uh, Milky Way galaxies, which, by the way, we've only scratched the search surface to see, you know, what uh, what is out there. But then in our own Milky Way galaxy, just know, we know that just in our planetary system. Right. Where we have our sun and our nine planets, eight, if you want to depend on how you want to. Count Pluto, right? And we know that they, we orbit around the sun. Now, what started that? And their reasoning to me is just give it enough time, it will happen. Well, see, all of this on here, if I just do all this together, well, in time, what will it cause? More chaos. Explosions. All we see from explosion is always chaos. Now, you think about on this one planet called Earth and all of these billions of galaxies. And by the way, the more they look out, the less life they see. In other words, all they see is more empty planets. No signs of life, no signs of intelligence. <clears throat> so let's reverse angle for a moment. So let's say if there is life, there are aliens someplace a billion miles away. Could they then detect life from here? I'm just asking questions. But here's the point. On this planet here, how did life only exist here as opposed to not uh, on, on Mars? Why couldn't you have Martian life? Not human life, but Martian life. 
you know, life that's indigenous to that atmosphere and all of that. But here on planet Earth is the only place where we have the abundance of life. And not only the abundance of life, but a variation of life, right? There are literally billions of variations of life. Think about the human body itself. If evolution, why would something evolve by, I got two eyes, one nose, two ears, one mouth, teeth. Why would I evolve like that? In other words, why would it evolve? Think about that for a moment. It just so happens that life spun on the earth, right? Evolved on the earth. Air, right? I just happen to have lungs. Why would I evolve that way? But why would I evolve with a nose? Why would, why would I evolve <laughs> with eyes with the color spectrum? Why would I evolve with teeth to be able to chew food? All these coincidences, right, that they're going to say, hey, if you just give enough time, it'll happen. That takes a lot of faith to believe that. How about the male and female, right, which I'm thankful to God for because I love uh, the, 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 my, my wife. But think about this. Now, God, where he put the genitals, the pleasures, everything about the human body. You're going to say that evolution just form that, right? And then you see what? In the particular animal life, the variations of all of this. Here's my point, of course, of saying all of this, you all. The Bible was never meant to be a book of science. It didn't break down the element. It didn't give us the element tables. It didn't give us all the law of the physics. Although when we read, you can see them in there. Here is the thing about it. The Bible is a book of faith. And it's a book of faith that tells me, one, that God created all of this. And I'm going to always challenge science that there's not one scientific fact that has disproven the claims of the Bible. And by the way, let me just say this, that well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about people's interpretation of the Bible either. I'm talking about what God presented, what God gave us. In other words, God said he created man. There's not one scientific fact to disprove that. There's not one scientific fact that proves evolution. Then if you get into evolution, there's a whole lot you have to really think about. And that's why I went through all of that to go, how in the heck can you have all of this wonder here, right? To say it just happened, Right. It, and then, of course, we're not going to even get into the idea of the very origin itself, the very elements itself that had to be there present in order to spark the explosion. Evolution is a theory that is believed by faith. Right. Not fact. OK. Not fact. Here's the thing. The Bible is true on many fronts. Now, I'm not saying you always understand what the Bible says. You don't understand some of the decisions that God made. But certainly you can't deny what the Bible has proclaimed. Here's a good example. Science cannot, doesn't give an answer for the nature of man. Why does man sin? No matter what they try to do, why does man sin? But the Bible tells us why we sin. And I believe that by faith. That's why I believe that Jesus came and died for my sins. I believe that, yes, God is the, God, the judge of the earth, the judge of the living and the dead. I believe that Jesus is coming back. Now, again, I believe that by faith. I believe the claims of the Bible by faith. Okay, that's what I believe, the claims of the Bible by faith. So here's my point. I don't think we should get into an argument with an atheist or scientist over whether or not can we prove any of the claims of the Bible because you can't. Let me say this. Only God can prove his existence. And he said he's going to come back. And then at that time, he's going to prove that. Until then, just preach the gospel. Live the gospel. Because you know what? If you obey the gospel... You have the same quality of life. Here's my point. Even a better life than any atheist, atheist or humanist could, could, um, could, could offer. So much more could be said about this, you guys. Much, much, much more. But I just wanted to kind of give that thought out. 
because I'm, oftentimes we're getting beat over the head now with the atheistic group. Let me just close this by saying this. The largest segment in our society that's growing are non-religious people, people who don't ascribe to any religion, but also in that group, are atheists and agnostics. And so what is the answer that we have to them? Well, you can't prove that God is science in, in, in a science uh, category. It's a book of faith. That's my perspective. Uh, and as always, please like and share this video and subscribe to BP, The Bible Perspective. See you next time.